So somebody asked me about the first year of freelancing. What can you expect as a freelancer? So I'm going to lay it out here for you. I did lots of freelancing. I've trained and mentored many freelancers. So I'll give you what commonly occurs with freelancers when they're first getting into game, into the game. And once you understand that, it will give you a nice strategy to pursue so that when you go into freelancing, you won't make any silly mistakes. So the first year of freelancing is probably going to be unstable, not steady. Work will come intermittently. It's a bit of a nerve wracking year, especially if you don't have income coming in. So for that first year, I always recommend that you transition into it from your previous job. You don't drop everything and to go freelance. That's a big mistake unless you have a lot of contracts lined up and the vast majority of people, 99% of people don't. Typically in your first year of freelance, you're going to have a rocky start, fits and starts. You may get a client after a month and then you may not get another client for three months and so on and so forth. The initial clients also, they could be not the best clients because when you're new, unless you have a previous experience in sales and business, the sharks, if you will, will come out and they'll detect that you're a noob and they will act accordingly. They'll lowball you. Uh, you won't make as much money as you will in the following years and so on. But that's to be expected because you are a beginner. You are a beginner, so expect to be making less the first year or at least the first six months. And so you have to plan accordingly. That's number one. Number two, when you first get into freelancing, you're going to have to understand that you're going to have to wear many hats. Whereas when you're working for somebody, a lot of stuff is taken care of for you. Whereas freelance, you have to take care of every aspect of the job, make sure you get paid, uh, make sure you handle the client and you uh, match expectations, you control expectations so you have good outcomes. Here's a tip in terms of managing your own projects from scratch, from top to bottom. How you manage client expectations is as important as what you deliver as a product in terms of whether or not you're going to have a successful transaction with that client, with that individual. So right from the get-go, when you're first starting out, you have to make sure that everybody understands what they are getting in the deal. It has to be very, very clear, written on a contract. Everybody involved gets a copy of that contract signed dated and uh, so that everybody's clear. The contract is there to clarify what it is the relationship is all about. That is really its role at the end of the day. If you have a dishonest player in front of you, the contract can help, but you could still get into legal issues and so on. So that's another thing. When you're getting out there in the freelance world, you're going to have to learn to be able to judge individuals to see whether or not they're trustworthy or not, whether or not they're going to be good people to work with. That's one of the advantages of freelancing, by the way, is that you get to choose whom you're going to work with. You get to choose the type of jobs you're going to do. You're going to choose the technologies you get to use to a certain extent. Now, there are some circumstances where a client may insist on a particular technology for whatever reason. So I'll give you an example with myself. I went working for a client and uh, at this time I was big into Java uh, and I had my own Java framework. I was very productive with Java, so I always wanted to use Java. I was a bit of a noob zealot, even though I had been coding for a few years at this point in time. Anyhow, so I went in and they had built their previous systems with PHP. Now, this is not brand new PHP. This is dirty old fuckery PHP really bad stuff, you know, Oof. not object oriented uh, as PHP three, I believe yeah, a long time ago. Anyhow, so they insisted I do it in PHP, whereas I had Java, this far more sophisticated advanced language I wanted to do in Java. And they insisted, no, it says, if you want the job, we have to do in PHP because we don't want to maintain a PHP app and a Java app. That's a crazy. In, in retrospect, I, I can understand that now. If you're a small company, you don't want to have to have to source out all kinds of different types of programmers depending on the type of code that they write. Or you don't want to get have to pay for big money for a big senior programmer who will jump around. Anyway, that's another story. So I did it. I, I went in there kicking and screaming, writing dirty old PHP. And what I discovered 
that it was the first time I had used a, com a competing language on the server side. I've done other programming, well, except for Pro, maybe. but anyway. And I realized with that project that though PHP was dirty and decrepit in many ways, it had certain advantages. And I realized that, ah, you know, sometimes even dirty old PHP might be the better choice over totally complete and super engineered Java. And so take away that lesson, by the way, in general. As general rule, don't become language, don't be married to a language or technology. You could have your favorites, and your favorites will change over time. But at the end of the day, you should really just be more concerned about picking the right technology to get the job done. This is something I keep preaching over and over and over again. Why? Because it's important. Anyway, so when you're freelancing, there's a, there are possibilities where you may be forced to use a technology, particular technology because in that case with this client, they have invested, they had invested in PHP, they didn't want to switch, so I was forced to write in PHP, which I did and everything went very well. But as a general rule though, I would say 90% of the time, if not more, as a freelancer, you're going to have a lot more flexibility in terms of the technologies, languages, frameworks that you use. Your job is to pick the right one that will get the job done as quickly as possible. Sometimes that will be your favorite language or framework or library, and sometimes it won't be. It really depends on the job. So yes, that first year of being a freelance developer, it will it'll be some up and down. You're going to have to learn the craft, so at first you won't make as much per hour. But that makes sense, because when you're first starting out, you're not worth as much per hour as you will be in a year and two and four years from now. So don't take it personal. Consider it as part of the process. So there you go. Those are my quick tips on freelancing in the first year. I hope you found it useful. Links below if you want to learn more. I uh, mentor people in all these type of things, by the way. Check it out, unclesteph.com.